right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I've got a couple updates regarding uh, some changes I've made to my low C hammer ray, uh, Curry trophy truck, truck Jeep. Uh, I've made some link adjustments, uh, link changes, and uh, we'll show you the differences between uh, what I've got going on on this truck and the things you'll find on a stock truck. So uh, some of this is gonna involve a lot of ge link geometry as far as four link suspensions go. Uh, I'm not gonna go hugely into depth on that subject. There are some great YouTube videos, tutorials that explain uh, anti-dive, anti-squat, uh, link separation, uh, mounting points, you know, how far to mount links. Uh, there, there's a whole tutorial out there. Actually, I think uh, one of the guys from Busted Knuckles uh, has a great video on that subject and he can explain more in depth on what's going on here. Um, but to get into the, the meat and potatoes of some of the modifications we've made here, we can look at a stock truck here. And uh, this has a high degree of link separation in it. Let me get a light over here. Uh, so this has a high degree of link separation in it. And uh, math-wise, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it's the way it, it should traditionally be done. Um, but I find with the uh, fast trucks that uh, it tends to overheat the uh, drive shaft. And with this truck, it was causing a lot of torque twist. Uh, all because of where the links were mounted. So... Uh, on this truck, because of where the battery goes down in this compartment, there has to be enough space to get the battery in there, which is part of the concession they made when designing the suspension. But when we cycle this, take note of the pinion gear here, the pinion angle it actually dives down. And as we cycle up, it's hard to see it in there. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer look here. Yeah, there we go. So when it cycles up, the pinion angle points upward. And as we cycle down, the pinion angle dives down. And that has a lot to do with how these links are mounted. So you can see it up in here. Our links are mounted way up in the chassis, which gives us enough space to get the battery inside here. And, and the math works here. This is not uncommon. It's, it's not a bad thing to do. But for fast trucks, it means this drive shaft overheats. There's not a lot of anti-squat in the suspension. So it tends to squat and it was getting this truck really upset out of the box. Uh, the thing was really a handful to drive. Um, this truck has a set of upgraded links, but it doesn't change the geometry of what's going on here. So that's one of the first things I wanted to uh, really address with this truck i've built a lot of these fast desert style trucks before and uh have kind of a, a recipe that uh i want almost zero uh link separation at the chassis so that our links are diving down towards the the front upper mount um, towards the lower mount and uh taking that separation away now that creates a lot of what we would call anti-squat which makes the the axle want to dig down which produces a bit more traction which if things aren't right can create its own problems the truck will want to lift the front end uh, but this truck seems to uh, have a great attitude about it so we'll uh, switch over to my truck now we've showed you an example on a stock truck this is stock suspension geometry okay so now we can dive over to my truck and you can see the immediate difference in the upper links this we've got i actually literally have zero separation of link separation at the front mounting point uh bringing our roll center on these links to pretty much zero they're, they're actually still infinitely out here somewhere but that's for another day but now you can see when i cycle this suspension take note of the pinion angle here so this is full stuff and our pinion angle is flat at pointing at the transmission and as we cycle up notice this is full drop and our pinion angle is still pointed straight at our transmission so we're only getting uh 
universal drive shaft change at the at the transmission end so let's see if we can get it in here kind of hard to get all this to focus with a bunch of stuff moving but so yeah you can see that there there's full stuff and full extension now this creates a bunch of anti-squat which can be bad it's actually a, a thing that's more crucial for drag racing with a four link rear end like this uh, they want a bunch of adjustability here but the closer you create the front link separation the closer you are to your your roll center on your in your link geometry like I said, I'm not going to go terribly into depth on that today. There are some great tutorials that explain what's going on here. But in my experience with fast desert cars, this is what I want. It alleviates a lot of heat out of the drive shaft because you're not having that pinion angle change constant through the, through the suspension travel. And it creates a bunch of anti-squat and the truck just acts better. So... This truck now, when I first got it, you had to have the ABC all the way up to try and combat just all the things happening as soon as you hit the gas. This thing would torque over really hard um, and it would be out of control from the get-go. Now, this truck, it, it exhibits a tiny bit of twist and uh, gets back on plane and stays very 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 composed uh with minimal abc uh, you still need a tiny bit of abc just to kind of help the truck out a little bit with stability because it is a bit narrow for the center of gravity that's happening with the large cage but that's another tuning issue um but yeah we made a massive improvement there the uh, next thing i'm going to talk about here is in the front end um this had a lot of bump steer from the factory and by adding a small spacer see that spacer there on our link because we don't have any uh, roll point adjustments on our chassis nor on our steering uh, bell crank setup they're all fixed so this was the only thing I could come up with I am getting a tiny bit of hit on the A-arm uh, at full extension at lock to one side but it's very very minimal uh something i can live with to uh get rid of 90 percent of the bump steer that's in the front end um i still want to be able to make camber adjustments and some toe in and toe out adjustments so i have ordered uh the camber link in a adjustable link and uh, also the toe link and those look very similar to what's on this truck here so this is the the low c factory tow link uh, and you can also use that for the camber link and that will allow us to adjust the camber but even being able to adjust those uh, it still had a bunch of bump steer in the initial geometry so this helped correct that you can you know how well you can see it there now now our upper uh, camber link and our tow link are running on the same plane allowing the suspension and the wheels to stay pointed straight when the suspension drops out. So, and uh, I can get the wheels bolted on these and uh, get some cycle shots of, of what's happening there. Differences between this truck and the stock truck. Okay, so we got the wheels bolted back on. This is the stock geometry truck. I'm gonna cycle the front end and watch what happens to the tire as the suspension so right there our tire is pulling inwards at full drop there's some scrub and this is at stock wheel travel still the shocks are not adjusted this problem gets exasperated as you adjust the suspension for more dropout so there you can see that occurring there the wheel is actually steering what we would call bump steer so there is a bunch of play in the factory uh bell cranks which we're going to upgrade and a, a better aftermarket servo would also help the truck be able to cope with correcting things but the bad geometry uh, kind of exasperates problems that this truck had so there you can see that occurring there 
as the suspension drops out, the wheels pull forward and they want to pigeon toe together. So not optimal, not what we want. That's, that's what we call bump steer. And that has to do with this rearward link geometry here. So that, that has to do with this link geometry going on back here. The fact that, let me grab a pointer. Try and get a shot in here for you. It's maybe hard to see, but these links here, your toe link and your camber link, if they're not running on the same plane, from even this angle, the rearward angle, it's hard to explain here without drawing a diagram. That'll create a lot of that bump steer we're seeing. So if we go back over to my truck, here you can see this spacer we've, at, we've I've added here, we've corrected that angle. These two links are now pointed on the same plane, very, very close. And that's, 90% of what's causing the bump steer scenario in the front end geometry, which gets the truck upset right off the bat. The ABC is trying to correct for this thing jumping all over the place. So we'll get a wheel bolted back on this and we'll show you the difference here. Okay, so this is a shot of my front end now, wheels bolted back on, and this is with more wheel travel. So as we compress the truck, see it stays straight, which on compression usually isn't a problem. It's on dropout that's the problem. Here you can see we get a minimal amount of bump steer out of this front end now at full droop. And this has more wheel travel because I've adjusted the shock points from the factory location. So, there we go. We are still getting what I would call for this type of front end, not optimal camber change. So our, our wheel still stays pretty flat at full stroke. I, I'd like to see that come in and add a little bit of negative camber as that travels from our front end. There you can see it stays fairly straight 90 percent of that bump steer is now gone out of this and that's with more wheel travel try and get a front on shot on this other truck so here is a front shot there you can see and this is that stock wheel travel even with some bad lighting, you can see that front wheel pull in. And 90% of that is caused by that front link geometry. Just adding that spacer took 90% of that out. And also my truck produces more wheel travel. So yeah, there's a few uh, little updates on tuning process with this new curry jeep that i've been doing uh just trying to correct some of the suspension geometry woes uh truck acts much better now i'm so much happier with the way it drives uh you can really get this thing to motor now uh whereas before it was it was two handfuls it's still a handful uh but much more manageable um as far as weight goes in the rear end uh, I have reduced the amount of weight that I put in it. Uh, we're running about three and a half ounces in the gas tank now versus four and a quarter. That was a little too heavy. Just trying to get that sorted out. Um, but that's where I'm at weight wise now in the rear end. Um, and then the shock oil on this and the shock dampening, uh, all that is still bone stock. So haven't messed with any of that. Uh, the spring rate on this seems really good. Uh, the dampening rate is decent. Um, I may mess around once I get a few more things ironed out with this. Start messing with some rear 
shock oil uh, just to help with some bigger hits. Um, but the truck's doing really, really well. So, yeah. Thanks for uh, watching, guys. This may be a little long-winded. If I can, and I remember, I'll uh, try and link uh, some great videos on uh, some of the subjects I touched on. Um, there's a lot of technical aspects to that and uh, to that subject. And uh, something, if you're into RC, you should learn, whether it's rock crawlers or fast cars, um, how the suspension geometry works. There are many principles that apply to both independent and straight axle, uh, four link, three link, uh, you know, with a pan hard, there's, there's many different scenarios, um, but a lot of the same principles apply to uh, both suspension styles, whether it's an independent A-arm style suspension, um, there are different roll points, but they all have the same basic effect. Um, and, you know, if you're building your own trucks, rock crawlers, um, and you're building your own chassis, then a, a great subject to learn and touch up on. Um, I'm just kind of a, a trial and error guy. I understand enough about it to know which direction I'm going, but uh, probably not the field uh, for uh, tutorial expertise. So, uh, but this is just my experience with this truck and where I've gone so far, uh, just understanding what I know about suspension geometry. So, uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks, guys. Bye.